Hello friends, welcome to the video lecture of basic electrical engineering. In today's lecture, we will see the term illumination and some phenomena related to illumination. So let's first see the definition of the illumination. So illumination means whenever a light falls on any object or any surface, that object or surface is visible. This phenomena is known as the illumination. It is defined as the luminous flux falling on a surface per unit area. That means I is the illumination, I is equals to phi is the flux and A is the area. So I is equals to phi by A. Its unit illumination is denoted by E or I and it is measured in lumens per square meter or sometimes lumens per meter candle. So in by this unit you can measure the illumination. Now let's see one another definition and that definition is luminous flux. So luminous flux is the total quantity of radiant energy per unit second responsible for visualization sensation from a luminous body is called the luminous flux. Another definition for the luminous flux is it is the light wave emitted by the body which produces the sensation in human eye. So this is known as the luminous flux. Luminous flux is represented by F or phi and it is always measured in lumens. Let's see the another definition and the another definition is candle power CP. The light radiating capacity of a source is called as the candle power. So how much of the light is radiated is known as the candle power. The number of lumens gives, given out by a source per unit solid angle in given direction is known as the candle power. It is denoted by Cp and the total flux emitted, if you want to find the flux, then total flux emitted is equals to candle power into solid angle. That is Cp into solid angle. Solid angle is given by this formula 4 pi. Now let's see the another definition and that definition is luminous intensity. So luminous intensity in any particular direction is the luminous flux emitted by the source per unit solid angle in the direction. It is denoted by E that is luminous intensity and its unit is candela or you can say that the candle power. Luminous intensity of source in a particular direction is given by this formula E is equals to phi by A. Let's see the another definition. Another definition is lux. One meter candle or lux is defined as the illumination produced by a uniform source of one candle power on the inner surface of the source of a sphere of radius one meter. And the unit of the lux or you can say the unit of the one meter candle is the foot candle, meter candle, NIT stiff. These all are the unit of the lux. Now let's see the laws of the illumination. So the illumination on the surface depends upon the luminous intensity, distribution between the source and the surface and direction of the ray light. It is given by the two laws. First law is inverse square law and the second law is Lambert's cosine law. So let's see one by one both of the laws. So first law is inverse law. So it states that the illumination of the surface is inversely proportional to the square of the distance of the surface from the source. That means illumination I is proportional to 1 upon d square. Where d is nothing but the distance between the illuminated surface and illuminated source. So here in this diagram you can see that this is a source which gives the light. Okay, so this sphere area is 4 pi r square. This is the source strength S and from here so many waves are going on and going on. If we talk about this distance, then the intensity at the surface of sphere is given by this formula S divided by 4 pi r square. This is illumination. If you want to find the illumination at different different levels, so you can check the distance. So as the distance is increasing, illumination is inversely proportional to the square of the distance. If we do the 2R distance from the sphere, then it will be 1I by 4, means illumination will be 4th time decreased. If we increase the distance by 3rd time, then illumination will be decreased by the 9 times. So this was the inverse square law. Now let's see the Lambert's cosine law. 
so this law states that the illumination on any surface is proportional to the cosine of the angle between the direction of the incident flux and the perpendicular to the area so that means if this is the area this is the perpendicular to the area and this is the source incident flux you can say that incident flux so if this source is giving the illumination at this point and if this is the perpendicular then this angle is theta because this is the surface at which the illumination is occurring and this is the area perpendicular so this distance theta so illumination is directly proportional to 1 upon d square into cos theta now let's discuss the different lighting scheme so how many lighting schemes are there lighting schemes are classified according to the location requirement and purpose and they are defined like this first one is the direct lighting second one is the indirect lighting third one is the semiconductor lighting fourth one is the semi indirect lighting and fifth one is the general lighting so let's see all type of the lightings one by one with the diagram so in this type of lighting system this is the direct lighting so almost 90 to 95 percentage of the light is falling directly on the object so you can see this two diagram so here the light is directly applied to this objects here also you can see that the light is directly applied to the object this is used in the industrial and commercial lighting now let's see the another one that is the indirect lighting so in this system the light does not directly fall on the surface but other than the 90 percentage of the light is directed upwards by using the diffusing reflectors so here you can see that light is not directly reflecting to this object but it is diffused to some other place and then that lighting is coming to the object so this type of system is known as the indirect lighting it is used for the decoration purpose in cinema halls and various places now let's see the third one that is the semi direct lighting so here the transparent type of shadows are used or created through which about the some percentage of the light is directed downwards and 40 percentage is directed upwards so here you can see that some amount of light is directed downwards and some amount of light is reflected with this shadow or you can say that the reflector here also you can see that some amount of light is upwards and some amount of light is downwards and this is based suited at uh, at the places where the ceiling is very high so if the ceiling is very high we are using the semi direct lighting semi indirect lighting so in this system 60 to 90 percentage of the total light is thrown upwards uh, or you can say that the it is uh, throwing to the ceiling for the diffusion reflector and rest reaches the working plane directly so that's why it is known as the semi indirect lighting so used for the interior decoration so this type of lighting is used for the interior decoration in this you can see that the major part is given to the upward ceiling and some portion is coming to the table or you can see that the object at object some portion of the light is only coming this is used for the interior decoration last one is the general lighting in uh, in uh, this system employs the type of luminaries shades reflectors which give equal illumination to all the directions so this is normal type of general type of lighting which gives the you can say that the which gives you the illumination to all the direction equal this is used generally in the industries houses and normal domestic applications so this was all about the general lighting system so this were the four different type of lighting scheme now how we know that which lighting scheme we should use in which place so there are some factors required for the lighting scheme so for light scheme you need to consider the following factors while designing the light scheme you need to consider the following factors first factor is illumination level you need to consider the illumination level how much illumination is occurring second one is the quality of light how much quality of light is you are using third one is the coefficient of utilization so how much of utilization you are doing that is also important factor depreciation factor how much you are not using is the depreciation factor and space height ratio so this all factors you need to consider in mind whenever you are thinking for designing a light scheme 
Another one is the illumination level. So illumination level is different for different type of lightning scheme and different places. So here I am going to explain you different illumination level for the different places. Like that type of work is given here and recommended illumination level is given. Plus or minus data can be vary according to the recent data. So in offices 100 to 400 lumens per square meter is required. 100 to 400 lumens per square meter is enough for the offices. If we talk about the schools, so at schools 250 to 400 lumens per meter square is required. So at school 250 to 400. Industry, if we talk about the industry, thousands lumens per square meter is required. If we talk about the shops, so in shops, 250 to 500 lumens per meter square is required. If we talk about the hotels, so in hotels, 80 to 100 lumens per meter square is required. If we talk about the hospitals, so 250 to 3500 lumens per meter square is required. So these are the requirements of the illumination level. So by this illumination level, you can get the proper lighting at the different places. In this video, we will discuss the different type of lamps. So here, I am going to represent some type of lamps in chapter illumination. So there are filament or incandescent lamp. So this lamp is generally used at the domestic supply. You have mostly seen this type of lamp. This is the filament or you can say that the incandescent lamp. So whenever, here let's talk about the first construction. So here the base is given. Here the pinch is given. Exhaust tube is given. A heat deflecting disc is given. Here one disc is there. This is the most important thing that is the leading wire. These two are the wires. These two are the supports. This between these two wires and support, there is one filament that is very important. This filament is very important. This whole construction is placed in a glass tube and this glass tube is filled with some inert gas. And depending upon which gas you are using, depending upon which gas you are using, the bulbs are having many types like halogen tubes, neon argon tube and so many mercury vapor type of lamp high mercury lamp, low mercury lamp, depending upon which material, which gas you are using, the lamp is named. So this portion is known as the bulb, this portion is known as the base and this is screw type of base. These two type of base are there. So whenever the electric current is passed through this base and it is given to this wire, it raises the temperature of the wire because we have seen the basic property of the uh, electrical conductor. Whenever the current flowing through the conductor, it gives the heat in the output because I square RT loss will occur. I square R loss will occur and that's why I square RT heat will occur. So at low voltage, only heat is produced. But at the higher temperature, at low voltage or you can say at the low temperature, only heat is produced. But at the higher temperature, the light radiation goes on increasing and in this way it will be reflect in the form of the light. As filament lamp consists of the wire having high uh, resist high temp high melting material or high resistivity material placed in an evacuated glass tube. So this type of lamps are operated at the temperature about 2500 degree centigrade because it has high melting point so you can go up to this temperature. A tungsten filament is and uh, here the tungsten filament is enclosed in an evacuate, uh, evacuated lamp to improve its performance. Some chemical like nitrogen gases are also fed. So this was all about the filament or you can say that the incandescent lamp. Now let's talk about the sodium vapor lamp. So in sodium vapor lamp, this is the construction. We are giving AC supply to this capacitor. And tappings are also used. This capacitor is connected to highly reactive transformer. It is given to this electrodes in this glass tube. This is the lamp tube. And in this lamp tube, these two are the electrodes. And this is double walled flask. This glass tube is double walled flask. This is low pressure sodium vapor lamp. So an electric discharge lamps require a high voltage for operation uh, or you can say at the starting and low voltage during the operation high voltage at starting and low voltage during the operation so at the starting 
the 450 volt is applied across the lamp to start the discharging process. And after 10 to 15 minutes, the voltage falls to 150 volt to the lower power factor. And if voltage is decreasing, so power factor will be lowered or decreased. So to increase the power factor, we are using one capacitor which is connected in uh, parallel with the supply. So it will increase the power factor. And in this method, this will the, give you the radiation that light will be uh, produced and it will be yellowish in color. So this is sodium vapor lamp. So in this, the main concept is at starting, we are giving the high voltage and after 10 to 15 minutes, we are giving the low voltage. So this is the basic of the sodium vapor lamp. Next one is the fluorescent tube. So this fluorescent tube is having this type of construction. Here you can see that one tube is there, glass tube is there. At the corners of glass tube, two uh, filaments are there or you can say that the two terminals are there, two conducting terminals are there. This is known as the filament. It is connected to the bimetallic starter and also it is connected to the one chalk and supply and with the supply we are connecting one capacitor in parallel to increase the power factor of this system or this tube. A chalk is connected in series with the tube light or this glass tube and a ballast and provide this provide a high voltage at starting because we need a high voltage. This tube light is working on a 230 volt. So if you are giving 230 volt to this and if one chalk is connected, so it will produce the high voltage at the starting and it is connected or it is given between these two terminals. High voltage is required for this type of tube. During the running condition, the same chalk gives the some supply voltage, not high voltage and remains the rated supply voltage across the tube. A capacitor is connected to improve the power factor. This is the bimetallic starter. So by connecting this, the high current will flow through this tube. This will be filled with the, some fluorescent powder and by discharging process and chemical reaction, charges are flowing from here to there and it will give you the light. And that light is the fluorescent tube lights output. So in this video, we have seen the illumination, various type of illumination scheme and various type of lamps. Thanks for watching this video.